One of the biggest limitations that R has is its inability to encapsulate several functions and code inside classes. That's something that we can certainly do in C++ or Java or Smalltalk or many other programming languages. We will see how we can define classes in Java and call them using the R Java package. By using this approach, we would be able to encapsulate a lot of our R code and, and variables inside uh, consistent classes that we can call later. So the first thing that we'll need here is the R Java package. So if you haven't installed it, you need to go into packages and install packages. The second thing that we need here is to install the appropriate uh, Java development kit. So Java has two things the Java Runtime Engine and the Java Development Kit. The first one is needed for running Java applications and the second one is for developing Java applications. So you will need the, both of them. So you can download, it, download them from the web. So after we, we have installed everything, we can call the jinit method. So this uh, method will create a new instance or will essentially allow us to call the Java virtual machine. So if we omit this and we just try to execute Java code here, you will see that the Java uh, virtual machine is not detected. This is not working. So if we call jinit and then we call this code that uh, we are essentially creating a string here, you can see this is a Java lang string and this J is called, um, refers to Java. So this is creating a new Java object and this works. So here in B, I have a Java object that uh, has many interesting methods. So I can see those with names. So if I see names, I will see all of these here. And I can see, for example, what's the index of uh, word. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I could split this into two strings uh, using the O. So um, this will be hell, uh, space and W and then R word. So essentially there is no good reason for doing this because in R we already have lots of uh, text processing functions so we don't specifically need the Java ones. If you have experience with Java you will of course be, of course benefit from this because you will um, you will be familiar with all these functions and you won't uh, need to learn all the cumbersome R syntax. So just by remembering your Java uh, functions for text, you could use them. But I think the most interesting example of using this uh, is not for creating or using standard Java objects, but for creating customized ones that we want to import into R. For example, I would e eventually like to have a class that maps all the results from, for example, a histogram or a linear regression or whatever algorithm we are running in R, class, let's say clustering, and I would like to store all those results into a class. So that would be like a nice application. So we'll start with a very, very simple one, which I hope illustrates all the underlying concepts. So before developing my class, I need to have something that is called a Java ID. So it's a Java development framework. You can download uh, this from the web. In my case, I am using Eclipse, which is the most famous one. And this will help you a lot in identifying bugs in your code and writing good code. So in this case, I will be generating the banana uh, class. This is a very, very simple, this is a toy example, of course, but it uh, has the central elements that we need for potentially any class. So the way I declare classes in Java is by declaring public class. This public uh, allows the class to be called from some other place, let's say that, not necessarily from the same class. So we need, we need to call to be public, remember that, and then we, we need to define um, attributes and variables and all the things that we want inside a class. In my case, I will be having just wait and this will be the constructor. So you can see that the constructor does not have a return method. So I don't have a void or string or integer here. I don't have anything. And the name of the constructor matches the class. A good practice with classes is always uh, naming them with the first letter in uh, capital. And 
here in the constructor I'm passing a weight argument which will be uh, assigned here so the, you might be wondering why I'm using this this dot weight will refer to this weight so it will assign the weight that we pass here here it will assign it to this dot weight which is in fact this one if I had this uh, the compiler would probably comp uh, complain saying uh, I have that here the assignment of variable weight has no effect because this would be equal to it um, to itself so it doesn't make sense so of course if I had let's say w here uh, something like this I could potentially do this but it's a good practice to use the same names uh, in the const in the constructor arguments um, as in as we use here finally I have a one method that is rather quite simple it's public string this returns a string and this is a message this is a banana so it's quite simple so in my case this has been uh, saved into my Java workspace which is here in hacks probably a better name would be fruit or bananas or whatever I'll be removing these two um, and now I have this banana Java file which is the one that I created in Eclipse and if we see what's inside we'll see that it is a text file this is essentially what I had before and there is no way Java is going to process this remember that Java grabs your code and it transforms something which is called bytecode which is kind of a compiled um, file that Java can interpret and, and work with it um, when it needs to so we need to find a way to transform this uh, Java file into a proper uh, Java object so the way we do that is by I'm using the CMD object in Windows, so the command prompt, and we need two commands. The first one is called Java C. So in Java C, we need to pass just one argument, which is called our Java object. This will create a class object that we will find here. So I have banana class. If I see what's inside my banana class. I will immediately see that this is a non-standard thing. I cannot read this. This is no longer text file. This is a comp this is compiled code that Java will somehow understand. But this is still not good because we need something which is called a jar file. So a jar files are essentially zip files containing several Java classes inside. So in order to create the jar file, I can do this. I can I need to pass two parameters, uh, which will be the final file name that I want. In my case, banana jar. Always use the same name consistently. So if the class is banana, use banana everywhere or whatever. And then the second argument is what's the class object that I will pass. And uh, the parameter that I need is minus cf. So if I run this, I get my jar file which hopefully should be available here. So we're almost ready. This executable jar file cannot be um, used uh, outside my, my R framework because I designed specifically uh, this Java class to be used there. So if I click this, you will see that nothing is happening, of course. So Let's uh, minimize this and see how we can really use that class here. So the first thing that I will need is to change my class path or basically to add things to my class path. The class path is the place where Java will search for all the functions or for all the classes essentially. So if I run uh, add class path and see what's inside my new class path, I will see that I have two things. The first one is the standard class path that Java is uh, pulling everything from. You can see that this comes from R Java and Java. This was um, created by the R package by R Java. So it is bringing its stuff from here. But essentially, I have a problem because R will pull all, all its um, all the classes that I define from this place. 
But you might be wondering, well, how, how can we actually code those classes? Because these classes can, are now available to the Java class path, are available to Java, but how can we actually create and use them in real applications? So that's uh, actually quite easy and it's not, uh, it's not a difficult thing to solve. The way we create or instantiate, that's the correct terminology, uh, new classes is by calling .jnew. So .jnew will uh, create a new instance of a class. Remember that in my case, I needed to provide one argument. So uh, if I don't provide that argument and try to run banana, I will get java lang no, no such method. It doesn't exist. And it doesn't exist because I don't have a, a constructor with that signature. So a constructor that is void here. My Remember, my constructor has a double argument. So um, the way to construct this is to pass, separated by commas, all the uh, other parameters that the constructor will need. So in my case, let's say I am assigning 565 grams and I run that, I get what I, what I wanted. Here you can see that in V, I have a Java object, this banana, and this is a memory address thing, so I, I don't care about that. And the great thing is now I have my class, That now that I have my class, I could call the methods that are inside that class. In my case, remember that I had print me, and it returns a string. One thing that uh, probably I don't like this so much about this library is that we need to specify what's the return signature that we expect from Java. You always need to have this. If it's void, it needs to be a B. If it's an integer, it should be an I, uh, and so on. So in my case, this will be a string, and the function that I will be calling is uh, called print me. So if I put print me, you get uh, what I wanted. This is a banana. So in more real applications, we would typically, for example, maybe read a file, read a file about fruits. According to the value of, of the fruit, let's say it's a banana or an apple or an orange or whatever, we decide to create uh, these classes conditionally on the value of each row. So for all the bananas, we will be creating banana classes. And we will probably be adding this um, in, in a loop and we will, we will be adding the, them into lists. And that's something we can do very easily in R. So we can call, for example, op is equal to b which is, uh, or I can put it this way, I can create four bananas, or three bananas, let's say. So I can create multiple uh, fruits here. I am creating five, four bananas with different weights. And I am putting them everything inside an OP object, which will be a list. So you can see that I have my um, my four bananas. And eventually I would like to call the method specifically, um, or the method for every banana that I like. So for example, maybe I would like to print, well, what's the banana um, method? And I, in this case is print me of banana number two. So I would like to call them, for example, like this, OOP22. And then I would need to put J call something like this. So this is a banana. So this would be for the third banana and this would be for the fourth banana. So we saw how to uh, import Java code into R. We saw how to define our own, our own customized classes in Java. We saw how to use the Java um, virtual machine to execute our Java code in R. We saw how to define customized classes that we could potentially use to map uh, certain data that we read from, for example, a file. And we saw how to call each one of the methods when we store all these classes into a list, which is a typical scenario. A final application that applies specifically to statistics could be, for example, designing a Java class that, that stores all the information that comes from a histogram. So if we, if we execute a histogram in R, remember that we will get, apart from the nice chart that we get, we'll get uh, the breakpoints, the midpoints, the density at each uh, bean and so on. So we could potentially store all that um, 
that data into a specific histogram class. Or we can do a similar thing for in linear regression, create a linear regression class in Java, and we can pass all the R uh, things from the LM function, I hope you know it, uh, into our Java class. So we could pass, for example, the weights, and the coefficients, and the standard deviations, and everything that we want.